Good morning and welcome. If you'd like to follow the Liturgy of the Word this morning, you can find that at number 1106. 1106. Our opening song this morning, number 790, the summons, number 790. This morning we'll sing together verses 1, 4, and 5. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Spirit. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a very special way, we want to welcome any visitors we have. We welcome those who are watching us live streamed and those who will watch us record it later in the day. Also today at this Mass, we will be celebrating Jim and Jody Erlenbaugh's 60th wedding anniversary, which was on Thursday. Just as a, a note, I served their wedding 60 years ago. <laughs> and uh, there's, I think it was the first wedding I served. So again, we'll congratulate them at, and have a blessing for them after the Our Father. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you have loved us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send your Holy Spirit of love to live in our hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to love one another as you love us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us give glory to God.
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am, I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of the hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with the tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. The words for our psalm response are, The Lord is my light, my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one abnormally born, he appeared to me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, whoever follows, follows me, will have the light of life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, today's readings suggest several themes. The first theme concerns the nature of God and our experience of God. In today's first reading, Isaiah had a vision of God, seated on a high and lofty throne, and seraphim stationed above, crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah's vision reveals the transcendence of God. 
The transcendence of God is his radical otherness from us and all of creation. God's transcendence is what makes him unique, all-knowing, all-powerful, eternal, and immense. One might say that it is the awesomeness of God. God's call came to Isaiah as part of Isaiah's experience of God's transcendence. Today, we express our experience of God's transcendence in adoration and praise. On the other hand, in today's gospel, in Jesus' teaching and in the miraculous catch of fish, Peter, James, and John had an experience of God's imminence, that is, God's presence, power, and activity in Jesus, the Son of God, who became one of us and lived among us. All who heard Jesus, all who saw Jesus, all who were touched by Jesus, saw, heard, and were touched by God himself in human form. Today, Jesus continues to be embodied or imminent in his word, in the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, and his spirit of love. We can also experience both God's transcendence and imminence in creation, in personal experience, and in our own experience of community. However, last Sunday, in his Angelus message, Pope Francis addressed our experience of Jesus. He is not found by those who seek miracles, by those who seek new sensations, intimate experiences, strange things, those who seek a faith made up of power and external signs. Jesus asks you to accept him in the daily reality that you live, in the church of today as it is, in those who are close to you every day, in the reality of those in need, in the problems of your family, in your parents, in your children, in grandparents, in welcoming God there. Vocation is another theme of today's readings. God's call came to Isaiah as part of Isaiah's experience of God's transcendence. Jesus' call came to Peter, James, and John as part of their experience of God's imminence in Jesus. After their experience of God, both Isaiah and Peter felt sinful and unworthy. However, God did not find them unworthy and chose Isaiah to be a prophet and Peter, together with James and John, to be fishers of men. We often do not believe that God would call us because we believe we are sinful and unworthy. We feel that we do not have the experience, the gifts, or the holiness necessary to do anything important for God. However, we know that God consistently chooses the weak and makes them strong in bearing witness to him. Today's reading from 1 Corinthians contains the heart of the gospel. First, Paul made solemn reference to Christian tradition. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received. The word tradition comes from the Latin word trotere, which means to hand on and represents the living faith of the church. What Paul handed on was that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. My brothers and sisters, it is interesting that Paul only made solemn reference to Christian tradition twice in all of his letters. Paul used similar language when he handed on the narrative of the institution of the Eucharist. Since he only made solemn reference to Christian tradition twice, it seems to me that he put the proclamation of the institution of the Eucharist on an almost equal par with the proclamation of Jesus' death and resurrection. Therefore, we might complete, conclude that for Paul, faith in the Eucharist is almost as central to Christian faith as faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us entrust our prayers and petition to God our Father. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we be attentive to God's invitations and respond to all that God asks of us, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, may God unite us in peace and respect for each other, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will inspire those working to reduce tensions in Eastern Europe, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that God will heal the sick, lift the burden of those with mental illness, and give strength to their families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the progress made in the fight against COVID-19 and for an end to the pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim and Jody Erlenval, celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary this weekend, and for all married couples, may their love continue to be a lesson in Christian living. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, especially Betty Jo Wilson and Betty Heidelberg, who, who died recently, Helen Warner Heckman, for whom this Mass is offered, may they live in glory forever with God and all the saints we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions, we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, by the promise you made in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ your Son, you bring together in your spirit from all the nations a people to be your own. Keep the church faithful to its mission May it be a leaven in the world, renewing us in Christ and transforming us into your family. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gift bearers for today's Mass are family members of Helen Heckman.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, with your, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Taught by our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now I invite Jim and Jody to come forward for the wedding blessing, or nuptial anniversary blessing. It is the tradition of the church at weddings to, um, to do the wedding blessing right after the Our Father, so the church carries on that tradition when anniversary masses. Lord God our, and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Jim with Jody so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that, surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer each other some sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The Adventuresome Group will meet this Wednesday, February 9th, following the 11 a.m. Mass. Sign-up sheets are available at the doors of the church, or you may call the Parish Center if you plan on attending. Please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass this morning in the school cafeteria. Unfortunately, the Theresians did not arrive this week, so we have no bulletins today. However, if we have your email address, the Theresian was emailed to you yesterday or Friday, and it's also available on our website. We had one death this past week. Betty Heidelberger, who was 71, died last Monday. She was the wife of Harry Heidelberger and two sons. Betty has not been well for several years. Visitation will be Wednesday, February 9th from 4 to 7 at Oakley Hammond Funeral Home. Her funeral mass will be Thursday, February 10th at 10 o'clock here at Little Flower. Also, we want to welcome back our choir. Isn't it great to have them back? And finally, Thursday was the Feast of St. Blaise, and the tradition of St. Blaise is blessing of throats, so we'll incorporate the St. Blaise blessing into the final blessing. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Our closing song, number 797. You walk along our shoreline, number 797. We'll sing verses 1 and 3.